this video in the kinetics and equilibrium chapter. Today is all about Gibbs free energy. We're going to explore the concept of spontaneous reactions, free energy, and of course, the math behind it, the Gibbs free energy equation. So make sure you have printed out and have your companion worksheet at the ready. Make sure you have your plan sheet. And of course, because there are calculations, we're going to need our calculator. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we are going to open up this video by playing a clip from one of my favorite movies. This is Spinal Tap. Now, during the Flower People period, who was your drummer? Stumpy's replacement, Peter James Bond. He also died in mysterious circumstances. Uh, we were playing uh, a uh, festival, blues, jazz blues festival. Where was that? Well, blues jazz, jazz, really. Blues jazz festival. It was, the, it was the. Uh, it was in the Oil. Isle, Isle of Lucy. Lucy. The yeah. Isle of Lucy. Oil of Lucy. Jazz Lucy. blues festival. And uh, it was tragic, really. He exploded on stage. Just like that. He just went up. He just was like a flash of green light. And that was it. Nothing was left. It was, his face. Well, there was. It's that, true. This, it this was truly true. did happen. There was a little green globule on his drum seat. It's like a stain, really. It was, it was a small stain. stain in a globule, yeah. actually. And you know, it was, several, you know, dozens of people spontaneously combust each year. It's mm -hmm. just not really widely reported. Right. Yeah. So I'm sure you were all sitting there wondering why did Stumpy ultimately spontaneously combust? And of course, you have heard rumors about people spontaneously combusting everywhere. Well, it turns out that in every spontaneous reaction, which we will refer to as exergonic reactions, some energy becomes available in the system to do some sort of work or initiate the reaction. And essentially, that is taking the place of activation energy. So if you really get to the root of it, that must have been what caused the drummer's spontaneous combustion. And I recommend Spinal Tap to everybody. You should all check out that film. It is a parody, and it is quite funny. Now to the science. When we talk about conditions that favor spontaneous reactions, we can talk about it in two ways. We can talk about it qualitatively, without numbers, and we can talk about it quantitatively. And so spontaneous processes are always favored when you have two conditions. When you have an enthalpy, right, a change in heat, where your enthalpy value, your delta H, is negative, meaning an exothermic reaction, and we see entropy, our delta S, being positive, meaning that your entropy or the randomness or the chaos of the system is increasing. Conversely, reactions will never be spontaneous when we have enthalpies that have a positive delta H and entropies that are negative. So the question always comes up, well, what happens if you have a mix of the conditions? You know, if your reaction is endothermic, but yet your entropy is increasing tremendously, or if you have an exothermic reaction, but entropy is actually decreasing. So what we're going to wind up seeing is that a lot of these mix of conditions really depend on whether the temperature value is high enough or in some cases here, whether it is low enough. So make sure you stop the video now and copy down this chart. Because there is a lot of sometimes in that particular slide where reactions could be spontaneous, we always want to be able to have a surefire way of determining yes or no, will something favor a spontaneous process or not? And so when there is a mix of conditions, enthalpy, entropy, and temperature, we need to grab a calculator and find out what our numbers say. Introducing to you guys the Gibbs free energy equation. This is going to help us understand whether or not a reaction will indeed be spontaneous. So delta G stands for the change in free energy. And of course, we have a monkey here, so we're going to have to be doing some thinking. Here is what this means. When you have a negative delta G, it means that a spontaneous reaction is favored, meaning there was a release of free energy. Just like when you have a delta H that's negative, there was a release of heat energy. Positive delta Gs will favor non-spontaneous processes. So reactions will not be spontaneous when you get a delta G value that is positive. And it's really very simple if you have an enthalpy and you have a temperature, and you have an entropy value, you can plug them all in and figure out the value of the free energy. So some considerations, because we're going to see when we are actually calculating free energy that we need to keep our units straight. So first and foremost, your temperature. 
must be in Kelvin. Why? Well, we learned before in the gas law chapter that we never want to have negative temperatures, and that's something that could happen with Celsius if temperature's low enough. Could throw off your entire calculation. Your units for free energy will be kilojoules, because after all, it is energy. The units for entropy, most of the time we've been getting joules per Kelvin, but because the enthalpy and the free energy are going to be using kilojoule units, we can't have entropy units that are just in the SI unit joules. We need to convert it to metric and make a kilojoule. So make a T-chart, divide by 1,000, turn it into kilojoules per Kelvin. And in general, in all the questions, you're always going to be given some combination of all this stuff here. Most of the questions are going to be at standard state, which is 298 Kelvin, which is different than STP, which is 273. And you're usually given an enthalpy, but if you're not, you may be given enough equations to handle Hess's law of heat summation and actually have to calculate the enthalpy by itself. And of course, we just in a previous video went through how to calculate the overall entropy change. So take all this together and you can calculate delta G. So make sure you got your companion worksheet handy. Let's try our first practice problem. We are calculating the free energy. Now here, they have given you the fact it's at 298 standard state and they have given you an enthalpy value of minus 890.4 kilojoules, so you do not have to do anything with Hess's law, but they have not given you entropy for the system. So they give you a table here. Of course, you guys have to calculate the entropy of the equation. That should be probably your first move. So pause the video now. Try and solve this equation. See if you can calculate the free energy change. Remember, if it's negative, that means the reaction favors a spontaneous process. And if it's positive, the reaction will not be spontaneous. So pause now and then hit pause when you're ready for the answer. All right, if you did this correctly, we should have gotten a delta G of 818.05 kilojoules, which, because your delta G is negative, it shows a release of free energy, and that favors a spontaneous reaction. Places you could have gone wrong, possibly in your entropy calculation, you'll notice I dropped down the values for each one of these reactants and products, and I have multiplied by the coefficient in the balanced equation in order to get the total entropy change, which in this case was minus 242.8 joules per Kelvin. Of course, I had to divide by 1,000 to make it kilojoules. And then really, it was a matter of just plugging it into the free energy equation, which I did here. And that's what got us our final answer. Not too bad. Why don't we move on and try our second problem? Very much more of the same here. So let's try and figure out what the free energy change in the system is and whether this will be a spontaneous process or non-spontaneous. Pause the video now and then unpause when you are ready for the answer. All right. If you did this property, we should have gotten a delta G of minus 32.4 kilojoules. Awesome, which means, and again, negative delta G, the reaction is spontaneous. Uh, here are your entropy calculations in case you might have gotten wrong here. Also, our T-chart to convert joules to kilojoules. And for the most part, these equations are really not too difficult. It's just a matter of putting all your pieces in the right place and making sure that you have the right units. So at the close of this video, you are now ready to calculate the free energy changes of a system. Of course, we're going to move on probably and practice this in our plan sheet when we convene all together. And if you did have any questions, make sure you bring them up in our burning questions segment tomorrow in class. So that is it for me. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson on how to calculate the Gibbs free energy change of a system. It's been a pleasure being your teacher for this flip lesson. I will catch you on the flip side. Peace out! That's all, folks.